raise their hands. Great. And um, so, Julie, did you have a question? I just wanted to quickly open the finance committee meeting oh. and the town building advisory committee meeting at 7.05 PM. Thanks. Great. Anyone else want to open their meeting? <laughs> okay, so after the presentation, we'll have time for question and answer. You can either raise your hand or you can put the question that you have in the chat box and you know we'll keep kind of track of time as committees ask questions. I originally thought we might have committee by committee asking questions, but it looks like given the numbers, we can just make that an open question forum. Uh, so if everyone could meet themselves, it looks like everyone has. Uh, I'd like to ask Candace Bradbury Carlin, who's the Lo Chilton Library Director, uh, to, to take over. Thank you, Candace. Thanks, Hatu. So uh, welcome, everyone. And I'm just going to go right into the presentation. And this is um, kind of um, a, an expanded version of the presentation that we did earlier. I think it was in April. Um, we just have refined it and expanded it to make sure that there's a lot of clarity about the project and where we're going from here. So I'm going to share my screen. Can everyone see that? Okay. All right. I'm going to, okay. So, um, the library project. Let me just get to wait a minute. Okay. All right, so basically um, this project has been in the works for a long time. Um, there's it's been a long thoughtful project. Um, it was a project that was approved in town hall um town hall i mean town meeting and um they approved that <clears throat> the library applied for the planning and design grant and then the mblc grant was awarded to the tilton library um, many many hours have been spent by town employees and volunteers and um and patrons um, and committees on the research and writing of the grant with feedback from the community over many public meetings um, many additional hours have been spent coordinating fundraising efforts that have led to almost $700,000 in donations and pledges. Uh, a lot of uh, very, uh, several residents and local businesses have pledged and the, this project is developed by, um, with help from the state library board that under needs, understands the needs of libraries. This project is ready, is really ready to go once it's funded. And the next phase, once we, uh, once it is funded, is to review the design with community feedback. Um, we feel like this project makes good financial sense because it is grant and donor funded, um, which shows you know, you know, real dedication um, from our town. And the building will be a source of civic pride. So just to give a little um, refresher of the significance of the library, break it down into what, why, how, and who. And these are, this is just a, um, going up the stairwell. We had asked patrons, you know, what they liked about the library and this was their response. So that is a pretty strong visual there. So what, um, the town is a, is a, I mean, the library is an essential resource. Um, what do we provide? Literacy, information, connection, learning, sharing, fun, uh, why? Do we do this? We want a thriving, connected community. Um, a, a library is an essential part of our town's civic infrastructure. And how do we do this? With materials like books, DVDs, eBooks, um, technology, instruction, discussion, workshops, and events. Who do we do this for? Who, who uh, benefits from the library? Who is welcome at the library? The answer is always everyone. Um, no matter their background or their stage of life and libraries do not discriminate. So to, uh, uh, just a visual of the how, we call this, uh, libraries are part of a, what's called a sharing economy. And so all of these things that you see listed here, and that's not everything, um, just goes to show you everything that a library can provide and it's sharing because you know, 
uh, it's available to everyone in the community. And it is part of a sharing economy because it's saving uh, these people a lot of money and bringing people together. So you can see here, it's a lot. And then kind of expanding on who we serve, um, you know, we have young children, they come in for morning story time, they come in at, you know, after school, which is right behind us. They take part in um, learning and sharing, uh, building, uh, relaxing. Uh, tweens and teens, um, at, they also come in after school uh, or on the weekends, and they're also right down the road. Uh, what, what do they do there? They study, they collaborate, they create, they socialize. Adults and seniors, um, pretty much any time, uh, morning, afternoon, after work, weekends. And you know what can they do there? Um, a lot of uh, big readers, um, they have meetings, they plan things, they connect with each other. And I would say all age groups do any of these activities. So we do serve a wide range of people and offer quite a bit to those groups. So can the, Til the Tilton can provide all of this? Uh, yes, but not without some obstacles. So the obstacles with the current building are um, accessibility, space, HVAC, energy efficiency, computer availability, and now new needs that have come to light through COVID. Uh, this picture shows a team program where they were all squished into this little corner and, um, to, to be a part of, of the program. So obviously that makes it, uh, an argument for the need for space. So um, accessibility, right now the building is not fully accessible. Um, it, it could be um, much better for the town of this size. So we have one bathroom, it's only on, one, on the first floor. We have narrow spaces and we do have not an official elevator, but what's called a lift. Um, as far as space goes, the library space, the building has not grown with the town in 100 years. There is not enough space for the number of books required for us to get state aid. And the, as the saying goes, with every new book, one needs to be removed, which is a pretty sad statement. Um, the teen room, which you can see here, is a narrow former closet and um, there is no separate room for programs. HVAC, um, I mean, it's always an important consideration, but now, especially now with COVID, you know, we're all thinking about that and we need definitely need an updated um, HVAC system. Um, energy efficiency, uh, I mean, the fact of the matter is old buildings are not energy efficient and have higher um, heating and cooling bills. So just one more note on space, um, in order to be fully operational, so not to be, not being frivolous or not as, a, as an add-on, um, libraries need rooms for all the programs that we offer. And all libraries offer programs in their own buildings. It's really a, really a big part of what we do. So um, the new needs uh, in facing a public, public health crises, because there will be more, um, what do we need? What did we, what did we learn the last year? We need to have flexible space. We need to have curbside service structures, uh, an outdoor computer pavilion so that people have access to computers, um, a drive-through service. So um, it's a possibility so that people could safely and easily and efficiently um, get their items from the library without having to go indoors. Like I mentioned before, top-notch ventilation and also specific technology. So really all of this leads to um, a, a real chance for, a, for Deerfield to have a future ready building that could be a model for the whole state because of the timing of, of when we're doing this project. And that would give us um, more access and safety for our town and good times and in bad. So here we have the um, proposed renovation which will address those obstacles and meet the growing needs of the town. And it just shows you here a little snapshot of the draft design, which um, addresses the, the need for a program room, uh, additional restrooms, an, uh, a better functioning elevator, new HVAC, more space for kids, more space for books, more computers, a room for a, like a room bigger than a closet for teens, um, quiet study, again, more restroom and meeting room and overall energy efficiency. So the timeline, 
we had two long-term plans in, in the world of libraries are about, about five years and also known as strategic plans. And we need to do those, um, have it on file with the MBLC in order for us to get grants like this. Two in a row, so that means for 10 years going, um, with community input, it was showing um, the research was showing that the, there is growing needs of the library for additional space. So going back to 2014, you know, this has been um, a very obvious need for our community. So a grant application was written in 2014. Um, a Tilton Building Committee identifies the needs in 2015. A project manager is hired for guidance also in 2015, as well as an architect. Community meetings were held for feedback in the following year. And then a decision was made to renovate and expand the existing historic building. Uh, a grant was awarded for 50% of the project cost, and we were number 15 on the wait list back in 2017. Um, a Tilton Capital Campaign Committee started raising funds in 2017. We moved up to, the to number two on the wait list this past July, 2021. Um, it looks like pretty, pretty, pretty sure we will be getting the grant in July, 2022. And then we'll have six months to secure the funding by January, 2023. So just to go over um, what is known um, about this project and what's not yet. So we know the, the building footprint, uh, the, the grant program, which um, basically is after the research and the input from the community. Uh, and this was something my predecessor did, um, filled out the application, which is called and, and, and calculated what's called a program, what the needs, what the projected needs are. And that is something that has to stay. Um, the estimated cost $8 million. The MBLC grant amount is $4 million because um, it's 50% uh, it's of the estimated cost. The MBLC only pays for library projects, not senior centers. And the library itself is committed to raising $2 million. And like I mentioned, we already have pledges uh, of around 700,000. We're not able to fully, if we're not able to fully fund this project, we'd have to start from scratch many years from now. And all of this work and effort um, would, would um, not result, would not have a result. The program, the program room would be fully staffed and ready to use, whereas community centers in town would need to hire. So what's not known yet is the building design. So what, we, what you saw a few slides back is a draft design. And the next stage, once we get the grant, would be design development. And that is, it could be a completely different design. Um, the materials we're gonna be using, the actual cost, which of course, as we all know, um, have risen in price. Um, when we'll get the grant, the grant, uh, like I said, you know, likely we'll get it 2022. Um, energy cost of the new building, it's, it, the, the building is, we are aiming for LEED certified and uh, to have um, really high energy efficiency um, need for additional staff. It's not likely at this point, but maybe down the road. So, so where are we now in this project? Um, you know, we, we looked at just looked at the timeline, but where, where are we right now? Today, we are ready to hire a fundraising, fundraising and marketing consultants. And the next year, we're going to be spending a lot of time building awareness in the community and hosting fundraising events to you know, raise and maybe, maybe go beyond that commitment of $2 million. Um, currently, I, I, we believe we're the only project in town that is fundraising, which shows real dedication on behalf of library staff, residents, trustees, and businesses. And we will work um, with the town assessor to estimate tax costs, because I know that's a big question. What will the cost be to my tax bill? And we believe it will be a modest amount, which can be easily um, made up by the savings from borrowing at a library. Uh, we also wanna point out that the library is not in competition with a senior center. I know it, it can appear that way sometimes. Um, and we just wanna point out that two project, the two projects have two different, excuse me, two different timelines and fundraising efforts. And the library um, does serve seniors in many ways. Um, the library will involve, will, most certainly involved the senior center staff and seniors in the design of, of this um, expansion. And seniors, when they come to the library, they get to be with other seniors, which they do at the senior center, and they get to be with people of other ages at the library, which can be a, a wonderful thing for, um, for, for everybody. And just an additional note about seniors, since it, you know, it's an important um, 
topic in our town right now. Um, we just want to say that, you know, it's really in the DNA of a library and certainly with the Tilton to collaborate. We do it all the time with other town departments, with businesses, with other libraries, with schools. Uh, individuals and um, and we really, really want to collaborate with the senior center. So with this new building uh, in the program room, the seniors could have regular access to the library program room and al almost meet the hours of the senior center. So it wouldn't become a senior center, but it could become a space that they could have access to that is new and energy efficient and, um, and they could use for their programs, whether it's programs they've planned or programs that the library is running, but that could be a time because it's not a time that other <clears throat> people would be um, you know, using the space. Um, mostly those times would be morning story time or um, you know, after school evenings and weekends. So it would be actually a perfect setup. Um, so therefore the staff of both the library and the senior center can work together to offer seniors more than one of us could by ourselves. So I just think that's really important that it's just like, you know, we talk a lot about our seniors um, and I feel like, you know, instead of being viewed as, as competitive, let's be, let's view ourselves as coming together. And, um, and we feel like this project is ready to go. And when this project comes to be that um, it could serve seniors in so many ways um, and in the meantime, the senior center, you know, could be working on their, on their project. So what are we asking of you today? Really what, why we brought you here is uh, as we move forward on this project, we just want to make sure we just think it would be easiest for everybody, um, to have consistent messaging about the library in this project, uh, across all the boards. And we are going to be developing even more in-depth, you know, language and different formats so that the, that we will be able to distribute to everybody. Um, so if there are questions, if, if somebody asks you a question or if you have a question, you know, hopefully will be the language that we'll be creating, the marketing pieces would help you answer those questions. And um, we definitely want reassurance that the town will secure the bond for this project. Um, and we really, really want to feel that we have the town, all, all, all the, the boards that are here, present here today, um, support as a town partner with the library for us to continue to pursue this project because um, your support really is, is crucial and we're just um, we feel really grateful that um, so many of you so many of the people on the boards are here are here tonight and are willing to to listen to us again um, with this presentation and to um, you know ask some questions and just another point I want to make is that we, are, we have full intentions to attend all of your meetings at some point to update you and answer questions as we go along. So I think with that, my presentation is done. And I think that- um, Thank you, Candace. Hand it over to Saad too. Wonderful. So now it's the time in the evening when we can take questions from all of you I don't see a chat room in this uh, Zoom format here. So if you have a question, either just raise your hand or just speak and give us your name and which committee you're representing uh, when you introduce yourself, please. Not everybody first. <laughs> don't be shy. <laughs> Well, I guess I'll go first since since everybody. Awesome, Trevor. <laughs> I'll get started, and people hopefully will join in. Um, so obviously, it's a huge project for the town, and the town, as you know, is struggling with multiple different facets of massive projects because of inactivity for many years. You know, we just have not, as a town, tackled all of the large projects that we've needed to. Um, because we're always concerned about our tax rate and, you know, want to be uh, physically responsible. Um, and, you know, meanwhile, things have crept up on us, like the, the sewer project, which, you know, the town supported, um, reluctantly <laughs> supported because of the necessity of it. Uh, and that project is moving forward. Um, well, one, one half of the project is moving forward, the $19 million that we uh, put forward for phase one and phase two. We've 
we we're in the middle of phase one as people drive over the bridge to Sunderland. You can see all the work going on. Um, we're starting design phase uh, for phase two, which encompasses that 19 million that we appropriated. So that's a, that's a big chunk of money the town is working on. And meanwhile, you know, the town building advisory has done a lot of work kind of assessing what condition our buildings are in um, and, and looking at what the needs are there. We obviously, you know, our seniors are under a tent right now and um, we're, we're looking at ways to kind of find some short-term um, housing for them in the meantime, as we kind of build on a plan going forward and we're doing needs assessments and things like that. So there's just a lot, um, and, and we still have not, not to, the labor sewer, but we still have another whole plant we have to deal with, which is, you know, $15 million or, or, you know, another phase of a project that's twice that to, to get the, get everything down to the, the plant we just remodeled. So there's just a lot, there's a lot of large projects coming online and, um, and we have, you know, the, the park going in, which is, which is great because that'll be funded through the CPA and the town already supported that. I think the library is an important uh, project for the town it obviously has needs. Um, the, the building just doesn't support the needs of, of what the library does today. It's, it's a total different, you know, 70% different function than it did 100 years ago when it when it was built. Um, there's a lot more services that the library su supplies our, our uh, community. And I think your message of supporting and working with the seniors is really, I think, really important because I don't want people to Think of these as competing projects, even though they are kind of they will they will be funded differently. They'll be designed differently, and there'll be different buildings, and they'll have different needs in the end. But I think in the meantime, it can be a stopgap measure where we work really closely together to find a a, a place for for seniors to um, to be a little bit in, in certain hours of the day um, while we're transitioning to something else. But um, so I do support the project. I am I am concerned of the cost. I know we have the, a figure of eight eight million dollars, and I know that you know based on just bids on any anything else we've done, they never stay the same. And of course, that was five years ago, and, and the world is completely different. So I realize it'll be a larger ticket. And um, I guess my question for uh, for Andrea would would be is is the um, help from the state stagnant at, at that four million? when the when the project went in or is there any flexibility to help further thank you for asking that question this is andrea bono bunker from the mblc um, our grant award is static it does not grow if the cost of the project grows it is a percentage of the eligible cost of the project and it is around just over well it's very close to four million 3.9, um, 3.994, I think. I'd have to look at it specifically. Um, but so we do have that amount coming in it based on what the eligible cost was in the estimate in the application. Um, you know, you can certainly pursue other grants for that building project as well. I know that there may be money through the utilities for the energy efficiency. Um, there may be for the existing building, there may be a, a way to tap into funding from the Massachusetts Cultural Council. So it's not the end all be all of grants that are that may be available. We just can't overlap. So we can't use double dip, I guess, is what it would be um, right. for grants. But you could you uh, so the town could um hypothetically, if there's ever an infrastructure bill coming out of the federal government, you could use federal grant money at, uh, to help with this project because this is state money, correct? You can. We actually had a conversation with a library today that's considering using their ARPA funding mm -hmm. um, that they received and moving forward, um, even though they're further down on the wait list, actually moving forward with their project sooner than we are able to give the provisional award. Yeah. Um, I don't know if everyone's familiar with how our project works or our program works because there is a wait list. It's because we have an annual cap of $20 million a year. So we can only fund $20 million worth of projects in any given year. And we have projects that are dropping off each year, which allow us to then award to the next 
library on the list. And we do fund those projects over a five-year period. So you get 20% of your grant award over five fiscal years. Sometimes we're able to give a little bit more in a fiscal year if we have the wiggle room there um, to a project and you've met your milestones for an additional payment. So um, it all depends. So uh, would the town go out and, and borrow the full expense, uh, full expense of the project, correct? And then, yes. and then after, the, after the project is complete, do you uh, start uh, giving money or is it, you know, Started so we, year one. we give the first 20% payment when the contract is signed with us. So once the town approves it and the contract is signed and executed, then we give that first payment. The second payment comes when the construction documents are completed and approved by us. Okay. Then the third payment will then come when you break, when you um, get your building permit and yeah. sign your contract with your general contractor. So there is money along the way, but we do okay. ask you to appropriate funding for the entire total project cost. Okay. Um, even though our regulations say just the eligible cost, because that's essentially your construction costs, but we do ask for total, we do recommend total project cost because of the fact that our pipeline has it over a five year period. So you right. wanna make sure that you have the money to complete the project. But a lot of library, uh, libraries and towns will do short-term borrowing um, and then do their permanent bond after. So they've gotten the most that they can get out of their grant award. We did have one library, Weymouth, that banked all of their grant money and raised an additional $250,000 in interest from their particular grant award that they could then put back into the project. And they put it toward... Um, you know, those construction costs at the end. Mm -hmm. So then their permanent bond was $250,000 less. I see. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Andrea. Thank you, Trevor. I'm sure that's a question everyone's thinking about. So are there other questions? Um, this is Allison Vandervelden from the Finance Committee. And this might be a stupid question or one that was already answered or that other people have already discussed, but with the senior center project um, looming and the library, you know, obviously the library grant can't cover non-library functions, but could, is there a provision that they could not, if, you know, everybody was so inspired to create a some sort of very large structure building where things were together in order to get more things under one roof. Is that, um, is that allowable? Just in my, in my fantasy mind of, of bringing those two things together, what are the rules? So this is Andrea Bono Bunker again. Um, we, so Lauren and I actually had a discussion about this earlier because we thought this may come up. So we have allowed libraries in the past to change their project type from say a renovation addition to a new construction. And we were talking about the fact that if you had two projects that needed to move forward with um, similar aims in serving your community, you could house them under one roof and we would allow that with this grant. The issue is, is that we do not fund any of the construction piece for the senior center right. and they would have to be separate spaces and there couldn't be shared use of spaces because of the fact that that money is designated for the library and in the application it was listed as um, no other use within that building but we would we would look at it um, and evaluate it and be open to it if this is something that you were wanting to pursue as a community, because we do realize that with smaller towns, it can be difficult to serve all members of the community. Um, but the building size for the library cannot be reduced right. from the application. So that has to remain the same. And you have to meet your eligible cost for that was in the application in order to receive the full grant award. So if it's under that eligible costs and we do reduce the grant payment because it is a percentage formula. I do have to say that in the past fiscal year, despite materials rising and other things, we've had two projects that went out to bid this summer 
and both of them came in on target from their estimate that was five years ago. So news. that was good news. And one of them was Marlboro. So they're not too, yeah. they're in central. So not too far. Mm. Uh, one question I had, I, so a lot of this discussion has been around economy of scale. Like, you know, because we are a small community, um, we're always looking for efficiency and heating systems, um, shared okay. geothermal, shared, you know, shared um, HVAC, um, Buildings not the same, like not building a senior center inside the library, but you know, um, with a with a joining kind of pathway between or a connector between two <laughs> facilities that could then house um, shared HVAC, shared you know shared plumbing, sh you know things that mm -hmm. we could do to make overall uh, the the library project and our project, the senior center project, more uh, affordable and and just long-term efficiency down the road. I think that was really what we were thinking, not so much that we would, you know, put a senior center inside the library and use the money for that, but but just somehow could we join the two projects so that we could share those infrastructure costs and long-term heating and, and cooling costs, things like that. And obviously we would expect that that infrastructure would be shared, um, but there are pieces that you could yeah carve out the percentage for the library um, right. in terms of the funding of that. But we, you know, we're trying to embrace the spirit also of Executive Order 594 and the new Climate Act and encouraging our municipalities to look at all electric buildings um, and really move forward in order for us to meet our climate goals by 2050. Right. Um, you know, so yes, we okay. totally understand that. Thank you. That's helpful. Would that get, would that, I mean, say we had a, a project figured out, I don't want to take up the whole meeting. I'm just, these are <laughs> questions I had in my mind, but say we had a project kind of designed in, in a short term um, and we, um, we went out to, you know, how would that, would that get drawn out in the next phase of design? Say we had a, we had a designer or something come up with a senior center next door, just hypothetical. Um, when when the library goes through this next phase of kind of really figuring out truly what this thing is going to look like and what the windows are going to be and structure and, and heating and air conditioning, is that the time that we would kind of marry those two together if we were that quick to come up with a design or at least? Well, I think if you're looking to if you're looking to have them within the same structure, the same building. No, um, separate separate buildings, but separate just separate buildings. Separate buildings, but I think share um, share HVAC or or any ways that okay. we can get more energy efficiency into both buildings. Okay. Um, well, so I can tell you about our process, and I'm not sure how it would marry up with the senior center. But what typically happens is after the library um, project moves forward and gets approval at town meeting, then we the MBLC consultants sit down with Candace and with the architects and we go through a review session of the design. This is assuming that you are keeping the same architects that the contract was written so that you could do that and you're not switching. Believe it or not, 50% of our projects do switch their architects afterward. Mm -hmm. um, so they're getting a totally new design but they're sticking to that building program. So the building program is really the essential driver here. We yep. can change the design um, and all the way through construction documents until those are accepted. So we move from that review session into finishing up the total schematic design because this is really a conceptual design that you've given in the application or provided in the application. So we finish up schematic, then we move into design development and then into construction documents. So that can take anywhere from six months to a year, depending on, on how quickly it goes. Um, and if you're marrying two buildings, you know, you might want to consider, you'd have to go through procurement office, obviously, but you know, there may be a way that you get the same architect or I'm thinking about Hadley. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the Hadley project. Yeah. So yeah. they, they did both at the same time. So they right. did the library and then the senior center and back and they share a parking lot, but they're not necessarily sharing anything else, Yes. but they use the same owner's project manager for both. 
So they were able to kind of capitalize yeah. on that. They didn't right. get the same construction company, which they were hoping for as being something that might save um, them in the long run. But, you know, it's, it, they were able to do it. It might be worth a conversation with them about yeah. how they were able to do both projects at one time. So, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Trevor, for all the good questions. Yeah. <laughs> um, do we, I'd, I'd like Ken? to make a couple comments if I could. I'm, I'm Ken Cutterback. I'm on the uh, CIPC uh, as the Deerfield School Committee representative. And um, I apologize, I'm coming late to the game in terms of any comments I might have related to the project. I wasn't around or did not participate, you know, with the uh, last go around and the the proposals that has us in line. Um, I'm certainly familiar with funding projects and state grants and use, utilizing various uh, state agencies to help the town um, construct facilities. I guess um, I am I, I can say that I'm fully supportive of trying to get a building project in place for the library. Um, you know and. I think you'll, at least I feel like uh, most of the committees in town are in support of the concept of the new building or the new, you know, an expanded library facility. Um, I just would express a couple of concerns that I have um, relative to the project. And it, it's nothing to do with not wanting the pro a project, but as we look at a new senior center or a, a senior center facility and a new library, um, personally, I think trying to utilize the original Tilton Library building, I don't know if it's required to stay in the plans, but we've done uh, kind of stopgap measures to make that, that building, you know, comply with uh, accessibility and everything else over the years. I don't find it to be a really functional and practical building to consider as part of the, you know, the project going forward. I'm sorry if I'm, you know, in the distinct minority here, but uh, I've, I've had a fair amount of building experience over the years on various projects. And uh, I, I think we should honestly look, especially with the senior center needs at having a new modern complex on the same site in the same location uh, that would incorporate you know all the types of things Trevor's talking about shared resources for two buildings uh, accessibility for everyone and really have a you know maybe just a single level building that are, you know, can be utilized and you know that's just my feeling as as it proceeds I realize it's as I said I'm late to the ball game but um, I think you might find more support with uh, people in town, I, I, you know, I listened to the conversations about what was proposed before, and um, it, it, that's that's just what I I would say. I, other than that, I am yes, I am totally in favor of trying to get this you know project through, have the town support it so that we're you know we stay in line for the funding. I mean, I I helped shepherd two school building projects through in the town of Deerfield, and uh, you know I've been involved for a number of years and, and fully support our efforts to, to bring the town up to speed. As Trevor said, we've put things on the back burner for so long that we're now faced with everything all at once. So yeah. um, just my thoughts. Yeah, thank you, Ken. Candace, do you wanna to speak to that? Or? <laughs> um, well, I think that both um, Andrea and I can speak to that. I think, because um, I, was, I was also on the building committee before I became, years before I became the director and, and worked with Sarah Woodbury on this. Right. And um, we did do, um, you know, prior to, well, actually part of the application process, I, I believe, um, Andrea, is that you're required to um, submit, come up with a design for um, existing and then new construction. Mm -hmm. And we did that and there was a site located on Bra at the end of Brayburn Road. So we explored both possibilities and with community input and um, talking with the architects and um, it was decided to go with the existing. Right. Um, so I don't, and I, 
so, and then speaking as the current director and people that come in that building every day, that, that building is loved. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that would yeah. be a hard sell. Um, I, I, don't, I don't disagree. <laughs> yeah. So from an aesthetic point of view, but, but um, I do believe that whatever would be happening with the building, um, you know, it would be a, it would be preservation, but it would also be, you know, updating um, to, I guess, whatever degree we would like. Um, mm-hmm. So what, what do you think, Andrea? Well, we do have you look at two sites when you're doing the application process. So you're right about that. And once the site is selected, that site cannot change from the application. So um, Ken, when you mentioned on the same site, that would still qualify. We have had libraries that, for instance, the Webster Library, where they got into it and they realized that the building was not salvageable once they started. So really in situate the same thing. So they only really kept a wall. So it changed project type to, to new construction. So, um, so we do have some changes like that that do occur. Um, it really depends on, you know, I, I was the director of a library that was a renovation expansion of a beloved um, National Historic Register building. And they were able to make it functional and flow well with the with the new so it depends on the design and mm-hmm. how they're able to you know make the floors meet between the two sometimes we see ramps sometimes the elevations just don't work but um depending you know oftentimes they are able to make the floor change so that it's seamless so that you still have that accessibility and the the character of that older building that's really a community decision Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Thank you. So I see Julie has a question and then James. Mm-hmm. Let me unmute myself and take my hand back down. Um, so I, I have a couple questions and then just one, maybe I'll start with presenting the, um, the town finance committee has been working on something we're calling financial indicators, um, which look at different aspects of the financial health of the town. One of those financial indicators is long-term debt. Um, And there's a statutory limit on long-term debt at 5% of a community's assessed valuation. Um, And so with the borrowing that we've done already and have in place for the, um, the sewer project, we're at the end of 2021, we're right at 3%. So that remaining 2% is in the neighborhood of $15 million to our, you know, to our total cap of borrowing that we can do. Um, The other piece of it though, is even though the limit is at 5%, once you start approaching that limit, then the bond rating agencies um, consider that a warning sign that your, your borrowing is getting out of hand related to your assessed value, basically. Um, so that is, um, I don't know what to say about that <laughs> other than that. So um, that, that's just sort of the, the finance and, and numbers behind um, where we are on our borrowing limit. So if we're looking at having to borrow 8 million or if it comes in more than 8 million, 10 million or whatever it comes in at, that's really taking us very close to that borrowing limit. And this doesn't have, this is just the, the borrowing that's been approved so far. So this is a combination of what we've already borrowed and what we still have outstanding that's already approved, right? So if we go into our second, like the second stage, the, the sewer up by um, in Old Deerfield or you know the sewer piping or any of that, if that requires borrowing, or if we end up in a senior center where we require borrowing, all of those are kind of competing. I know we keep talking about not wanting to compete against the, the um, senior center, but I mean, that's the pot of money that's available. Um, and I don't really have, I'm like, I'm supportive of the library thing, you know, I'm not saying, you know, this, this is good or bad. I'm just saying these are the numbers that we have available right now. And that's just kind of the, the financial um, situation that we're in as a town. Can I ask a question about that? Yeah, absolutely. The long-term, do you know what um, counts as long-term? Because I'm thinking about if we were to be able to borrow 
more short term for that full amount uh, until the reimbursement it, yeah. is that still going to count? Mm, I think it does. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not it's not just I this is, might be a question for Brenda. My impression is that is so any borrowing you can do short term borrowing up to 10 years, right? Anything that you think is going to take longer than 10 years, you you end up needing to bond. So you can get a pretty far without having to bond things um, with short-term borrowing. And the, my understanding is that the rates are much better for short-term borrowing than they are for a bond. Yeah. So if you can mm -hmm. do the short-term borrowing kind of as long as you can, and then when you get to the point that you can't anymore, then you go for a bond at that point. Mm -hmm. um, my feeling is that that short-term borrowing is included in this number. Brenda, do you have a comment on that or? Uh, short-term borrowing included in so the five percent the limit the five percent limit of assessed valuation um what yes. that yes. short-term total debt right okay Correct. that's what i thought yeah mm -hmm. um so putting that aside <laughs> i did have two questions one was um Allie asked about the shared space um, and whether we could put the senior center in there as well. Um, if there is, um, so the design I understand has kind of a community room that can be used for anybody. So say the senior center office is somewhere else, but the senior center regularly uses that space just for programs or something that would be acceptable, right? I think that's an Andrea question. That is still, that's seen as shared usage, um, but so the program room for the library should be library first because the library does offer several programs throughout the day. So, um, so that's where it gets dicey with these, with these facilities that have more than one um, function under their roof. So it's not to say that you couldn't, that the seniors couldn't use it, but what we've seen with libraries that share with a senior center is that, it, and these are not ones that have been funded through our program, that it's very hard for the libraries to then carve out their space and to carve out their time for the, for program use. So, um, so that is something that I would just caution you against, um, you know, making that one room be the function for both, because you will want to be having story times and children's programming during the day, as well um, as senior programming. So, so we wouldn't fund something that would be um, the, the use, the program use for the senior center. But it could be like if, oh, Candace, go ahead and then I'll. Yeah, um, I, I understand that, Andrea. And um, the way I look at it and what we had in our presentation slide is that we view it as, you know, we collaborate with all kinds. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the program, I mean, honestly, right now, and, and, I, and I see this into the foreseeable future, programs don't necessarily happen between like 11 and 3 and just generally don't. And so that could be a perfect time for senior programs. And that could be a program that the library is doing with, they're not, they're not just saying, here's the space, do what you will. Right. They're doing it with the senior center as a collaboration. And then sometimes the senior center is using the space. Um, and, um, and it wouldn't be every day, you know, we could just have blocked periods of time where we're doing programming for seniors and who's hosting it um, is either the library, the senior center or both. And I, that doesn't feel at all like stepping on library toes as far as the way we're operating now and the way I see us operating in the future. So I don't know if me saying all that makes a difference to what you were just saying, Andrea. So I think it then comes down to, you know, if it's a library sponsored program for the senior center regularly, then that's one thing. But again, it comes down to that funding of senior center space versus library space. So, um, so I would, you know, in whatever design you do for the senior center, I would make sure that there's an alternate space too for, for right. something for, for them, sure. whether it be smaller or whatever it may be. And maybe that larger room could be used for programs that would be, um, you know, larger for the, for the community and not, you know, a regular usage. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. 
Julie, did you have one more question? I did have one more question. Sorry, <laughs> I'm dragging on. Um, you you commented the size of the building cannot change. Is that like what does that mean? Is that square feet? Like if we totally changed square our, feet, took mm -hmm. down the building and put up a completely new building, as long as it was at least as many square feet or more, we're good. Is that yes? Because that's driven by the building program, which had community input for what the needs were for the community. So that's what we accepted as um, the community's need factor for square footage for a 20 year horizon. I understand now, thank you. You're welcome. So, hey, James? Yeah, so uh, what is the historic preservation status of the existing Tilton building? I don't, I don't, believe, I don't believe it is okay. on, on any historic, I mean, we've we've okay. done some CPA work to the historic CPA fund for the steps, I think. Yep. It's not. But <clears throat> I don't know if it's registered as a historic building. Nothing, there's yes. nothing registered in um, South Deerfield. No. It, it, it is, it, it's over 50 years old and um, clearly we've used it. The definition has been allowed to be historic. And that was how we used to, you know, for res restoration work of the, um, you know, the steps and then, and the, you know, the finial things on the roof. Roof, right. Nancy, did you have a question? Um, I was just going to say, we use CPA monies for the roof replacement um, of the slate roof and to redo the steps over. Mm -hmm. Great. All right, I think we have time for one more question. We're going to stick to our. Go ahead, Greg. I would like to ask: um, Is there anything that says that the building cannot be designed in such a way that the addition adjoins the building next to it? Because the church is obviously in the mix of what the town is looking at renovating. I'm on the building advisory committee, and one of the things that has been talked about is um, renovating the church in such a way that it could be more of a community center or um, uh, the senior center moving there. They're going to be there temporarily this coming year, but there's no definite plan at this point for any of it. But um, several years ago, the town administrator, Wendy Foxman, asked me and um, several other people um, to do a tour of those buildings. And at that time, um, an architect that was um, part of the whole conversation suggested bridging the buildings together. And to, to um, tie in with what Mr. Cutterback was saying earlier about having a single story structure rather than a two story structure could significantly decrease the cost of the overall complex, whatever you want to call it, of buildings, which obviously are going to be, you know, existing in relation to one another in the future more than they have in the past. Um, having the, the buildings in the plan that this architect was putting forth um, was in essence a bridge, a two-story bridge between buildings. And he was suggesting it either with the senior center in its current location and the church or you know the library and, and the church. But that's obviously the, his intention, I think, was to, to avoid the cost of having two elevators in each building, which would be totally unnecessary if the library could continue to exist in its current form with the second floor being, you know, having perhaps an improved lift, but if the addition was a single story structure and it went over to and joined with the church, then the two facilities could become, you know, integrated, even though they are separate facilities. So my question is to get back to the beginning, um, is there any reason why the buildings could not be joined together with some architecturally, aesthetically, you know, appropriate um, bridge like that or walkway? We'd have to look at the functionality of that um, because one of the, the main goals of our program is to have functional space. So sometimes we find that when you try to marry two existing buildings that one that had a primary function that was completely different than what a library's function is, um, it can be difficult. Um, I'm not sure what the church looks like. I'm not sure if you're saying that the church would house the functions of the senior center or if it would house library functions as well. Um, but it is, it, you know, I'm thinking about the Hopkinton 
library, they did marry an existing library and a church, but it was from the get-go that they decided to do that. It wasn't later on in the game. So it was always the, um, the aim, but that church, they can only really use as a meeting room because of functionally, it does not allow for much else. You have to think about the weight bearing load of the floors mm -hmm. of the buildings. You need 150 pounds per square foot. So oftentimes older structures can't meet that requirement. So you're looking at then, you know, even though it, it's existing and that is a very green way to, to go about building because you're, you're not um, creating something new um, and using more materials, but at the same time, then you're tackling the issues that exist with renovating two old structures. Mm. So, so that can be quite costly. Oftentimes when our libraries do the, um, the exercise of looking at renovating their existing buildings alone without doing the additions, it comes out to the same total project cost or the same total cost that it would be to the town to renovate and expand um, because of the fact that they are encountering issues with existing buildings and having to upgrade both. Thank you. Great, thank you, Andrea. Yeah, and we're right at eight o'clock and it was great to have all these questions. Thank you so much. We will definitely, on behalf of the trustees, be coming to other committee meetings, uh, keeping everyone informed on what's going on. And Candace, do you have any closing comments? Uh, yeah, I guess my closing comment was my closing comment is about um, what the last slide said. I know that we have, um, you know, didn't want to use the word competing, but yes, there's a competing, uh, of, um, you know, um, interest for for the cost of these um, of the library and the senior center and other things. Um, but if we could just for the purpose of this project and what and the work that we're doing in our department um, move forward with just knowing that that we have the support of you all as we pursue. It doesn't mean that we're going to do it, but that as we pursue it, because we're still pursuing it as opposed to, you know, it's it's set in stone and, and it's gonna happen. Um, and, um, and also just to have consistent messaging. So just to, you know, if you have questions, if you want the library to be at a meeting um, that you think you want, it would, it would be worthwhile to have us there when you're talking about the bigger picture of the town. Um, you know, we would we would love to be a part of that and we'll be preparing, like I said, materials to share with you for you to have to answer questions for yourself or others. So um, so I guess this is just kind of like a springboard of, you know, the next year as we see how this all unfolds. And, um, you know, just thank you again so much for taking the time at the end of a, of a work day to um, stay alert and, uh, um, and learn more about this project with us. Carolyn, you had your hand up too. <laughs> oh, I, well, I just want to say that um, I'm hoping that the library, and I know Satu that you had already agreed um, to come together in this big umbrella committee, um, connecting the communities initiative, just so that we can discuss and be creative. Mm -hmm. I, I think there's not a question that we support the library <laughs> expansion and the building projects. But um, I am concerned about the debt load um, only because, you know, over the years we have had none. And then all of a sudden this is just ballooned up with all these projects. And, um, I, and I, I know, know most people don't think about some of these other infrastructure projects that we have, but, you know, we have probably three or $4 million of damage to River Road that happened in July. And um, you know that needs to be addressed. We we have several million dollars worth of you know piping um, that needs to be replaced in town uh, it, it during that's in addition to the sewer project. And um, so it's just uh, you know there, there's just a lot. And so we need to be creative and and coming together and being positive in this you know the CCI um, group is gonna be really important for next year. So I'm hoping the library will participate and be a really active 
um, participant in trying to bring everybody together and figuring out how do we do this instead of instead of talking about competing and 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 being overwhelmed let's just tackle it together and try to figure out a way to move forward together and um and it may be that we don't need want to borrow the money because it is restricting maybe we'll come up with some other creative way that will make this happen um you know in in a in a different manner but the idea is to bring everybody's heads and and thoughts and and together and try to figure something out so that we can do this and i don't i don't like i said i don't think there's any question that people don't support the library we we it fills a huge need in our community and we want it to happen but you know coming together i think is what's going to be key so thank you satu already for being willing to serve on this committee because i know I, yeah key. carolyn yeah i was so excited to hear about this committee because i do feel there's too there are too many silos in this town and not enough communication so i think this is a great first step you know to really working together i agree it's all about coming together and, and listening to each other and and hopefully everyone's meet needs can be met so wonderful yeah. Yeah, I agree, and um, and I, I plan on being involved, and um, and I'll probably be relying on you, Andrea and Lauren, just as, as we come up with ideas, saying, "Is this possible? Is that right. possible?" <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And I have to say, if you have any questions, you know, I I know that the hour is up, but if there are any questions, you can always contact us, and we're happy to answer. I do just want to say, you know, since you're talking about planning for the longer term. Um, our next grant round, we're not looking at that until late 2020s. And it's going to be much more competitive with fewer awards because of um, our discussions with the um, administration finance um, office. So we are, we're looking at a different structure for our next grant round. So I just wanted to make you aware of that if you're yeah. thinking about, you know, if you, you're not taking, um, this project up at this time or um, deciding on something else. I, I just feel like we need to be transparent about that mm -hmm. fact that we will not be funding every project that applies like we did in the last grant round. Mm -hmm. Very good to know. Good to know. Well, yeah. Great, thanks well, again, Andrew. Thank oh, you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'd just like to say thank you to, to everyone serving on all the various building committees in this town at this point in time, you uh, you have my sympathy. <laughs> I can remember 30 years ago going through a rather strenuous effort to uh, build an elementary school. So, um, and you know, and all the subsequent building projects and other projects that have been funded in town. It's uh, it, we need we need the help of volunteers and of uh, people like you and I, I thank you for the efforts that you're making so and okay. thank you andrea for joining us this evening yes. very you're helpful. welcome thank you for yeah. having me thank yeah. you ken thank you set too thank you so, all very much i guess we'll formally close the tilton fund meeting tilton Great. trustee meeting i don't know if you guys need to formally close your meetings <laughs> i'll make a motion to adjourn the uh, select board and i will they second that <laughs> all right <laughs> Good night, everyone. Good night. I move that the David. finance committee meeting Thank be adjourned. <laughs> Second. <Yeah. laughs> It'll be four hours of uh, everybody getting out of the meeting. That's what I figured. <laughs> Can we have a roll call? <laughs> All those in favor of a uh, finance committee meeting closing, aye. aye. All right. <laughs> be back. I think I'm the only one left. So we can... <laughs> Good night, everyone. Bye. Thank Good night. you. Right. Good night. Bye. 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 Bye.